Welcome to the AIA structural exam module. This is number eight. Today we're going to do a structural vignette problem. Uh, the vignette problems are used on the AIA structural exam to test your design competence. And what they consist of is usually a uh, actual design problem where you have to lay out a framing uh, either for a roof or a floor system or both. And they're really not quite too difficult to do. You, with a little bit of judgment, you should be able to pass them. So we're going to take a look at an example one right now and give you some guidance on how to solve it. I'm going to go ahead and draw out the floor plan. So this is going to be module eight, sheet number one. And let's lay out a plan here and then I'll explain what the problem is. So what we have is we have a a building plan that looks something like this. It's essentially a rectangle. With the door opening here, it has some interior bearing walls. And then it has some doors inside. And then it has a enclosure area over on the lower right, the lower portion of the drawing. And we'll put some dimensions down. This is a very typical problem that you'll see on a on an AIA exam. So this is approximately 30 feet. This is approximately 10 feet. And this is 48 feet. And this is 20 feet. And what the exam tells us is that, so we have our floor plan. And what the problem statement is, is to provide a roof framing and ceiling framing layout. And what they tell us is that this area over here is open. It has an upper roof, which is flat. And this is all lower roof. So they don't provide an elevation for us, but what they do is they give us this floor plan and they want us to lay out an approximate, uh, what we think is the best roof system. And I have not bothered to put in the details in here, but what you have is you have offices in here uh, with doorways connecting in between the offices. Uh, so this is kind of a uh, broken up floor plan with various offices in here. This whole area in here is the lower roof and this is an upper roof. So when you see a problem like that, what they're asking you to do is to do a ceiling layout using joists. And they give you certain criteria. They tell you that the joists are metal or steel open web joists. And what they want is they don't want, they, they don't want any interior columns. And so open web steel frame joists, as I'm sure you're familiar with, are prefabricated joists, which have an open web. They're specifically made for long spans. And when they tell you no interior columns, what they're giving you a tip on is they're, they're telling you that they don't want you adding anything. They don't want you to make no additions or modifications to the floor plan. That's pretty typical on these problems. So when they give you these criteria, and I'm just trying to give you an overview of the problem, uh, they're telling you that when you 
work with this floor plan. We don't want you coming in and adding any walls in. We don't want you amending the plan. We want you to work with the plan the way it is. You designate where the bearing walls are and lay out the, the joist plan. It's really not a difficult problem, but you have to follow the, you have to follow the uh, instructions. So when you look at this, you're going to have two framing plans. You're going to have this area over here, which I'll call area one, and then you're going to have area two, which includes all this partition space over here. This is a lower roof plan, and the other criteria that they gave us in this plan is that they want a flat roof. They want two elevations, or two different roof plans. One is an upper roof plan, and the other one is a lower roof plan. So you're actually going to draw this out on two different sheets. You're going to have one sheet which is going to have an upper roof plan, and another sheet which will have a lower roof plan. Let's do the ro lower roof plan first, and I'm going to use two different colors. I'm going to use red for the lower roof plan, and I'll use blue for the upper roof plan. So the lower roof plan, if we had to lay out the roof plan for this, how would we lay out the joists? Well, it's really not a difficult problem at all, because when you look at it, your judgment should give you the answer. This is going to be designated as our bearing wall, so I'll use a uh, orange color to outline the bearing wall location. So we're going to make this a bearing wall. And for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to draw it in here. Of course, we're going to leave openings in here. But we're going to make this our bearing wall. This will be an opening here. Bearing wall. And we're going to make this a bearing wall because it's the most logical location given the way this floor plan is laid out. So now we have our designated bearing walls, and of course perimeter walls are all bearing walls in this case. So all of our perimeter walls are bearing walls. So I'm using orange for my bearing walls. And just to make it clear, that all our perimeter walls are designated bearing walls. So now that we see that, the lower plan, let's do this part first. The lower plan is a rectangle. We have a 48-foot distance in this direction. And so to lay out joists in that direction is really not a responsible way to do a plan. It stands to reason that the joist should be laid out along the short span. And I don't think I need to do a big explanation on that, but I'll just give you a very short version of an explanation that obviously if you are doing any type of structural design and you have two bearing walls which are spaced 10 feet apart, the joists are going to be fairly reasonably sized. They could probably be a 2 by 10 at 16 inches on center, maybe a 2 by 12 at 16 inches on center, depending on what the deflection requirement is. But if you lay out a floor plan where your bearing walls are 48 feet, clearly you're not going to be able to do that with 2 by 12s. The span there on a 48 foot is going to require a huge beam like a glue lamb, either a glue lamb beam or even a truss. So this is going to cost too much. It doesn't make sense, so we don't do that. We do what's cost effective, what's easy to build. So on your floor plan layout, on this portion of the roof, we're going to go with a joist layout, which is going to follow really what I think is common sense. And I won't draw them all out, but I'll just use some notation here to indicate this is an old style notation, some of you may remember this, which indicates the direction of the rafters 
and the spacing. So I, my joists, my rafters are going in this direction. On the actual exam, they actually have you draw these in. I'm going to use a simple short notation. They don't actually on this test have you size the rafters. They just want you to lay it out. Your structural engineer will probably do the sizing. So that part is taken care of. Now on this part we have the same situation. We have bearing walls going in this way in this direction and here it's sort of a toss-up. We can actually this is 20 feet so we can actually continue that spacing all the way down here. Same exact designation except that we stopped over here for the bearing wall and we're going to run the rafters along the short span which is the 10 foot span. In this direction exactly the same reasoning. In this direction and I, I forgot to label this as a bearing wall so let me do that really quick. Here again we have the same situation except that now we have a 20 foot short span versus a 30 foot long span. So naturally we don't want to space our joists along the long span. So what we're going to do is we're going to shift the joist spacing and we're going to run again across the short direction and I'll use my notation here. That's the direction of the joist and they're going to go from this bearing wall all the way to that bearing wall. That's my joist spacing. And since that's a 20 foot span, I could probably make a reasonable guess with a 20 foot span, it's going to be a fairly large joist. Uh, it might be a 4 by uh, 16 at, six, at uh, 16 inches on center, or it could be a 2 by 18, or excuse me, uh, yeah, probably a 2 by 18. That's a little bit large because the depth gets to be a little bit big. Anyway, you don't have to size it, I'm just giving you some approximate numbers, but the exam is going to want you to lay out the actual joists. Okay, so now we've solved. Here you're going to have a header running across. So now we've done the layout for the lower roof. For the upper roof, again, using the same judgment, we have two numbers here. I'm going to shift the color of the pen talk about the upper roof. So for the upper roof, we have a 30 foot span in one direction. We have a 48 foot span on the other direction. The drawing is not drawn exactly to scale. My apologies for that. But it stands to reason these are going to be larger beams because we're going with a 30 foot span. So we're going to go in the short direction and we're going to go all the way across with no columns. And again, you don't have to do the sizing someone else is going to do the sizing, that'll be your structural engineer. So using my notation here, uh, the exam wants you to actually lay them out, but I'll use some simplified notation here for my structural framing. And so I'm going to run my beams running across the short span, and they're going to go from this bearing wall all the way to that bearing wall. And again, if I had to lay them out, they would look like this. So I don't see this as a very complicated problem. I think that you could solve this fairly quickly. And uh, structural vignettes are really not that difficult to solve, but people tend to get caught up on them. You know how much time they give you on the test for a problem like this? They give you one hour. That's a lot of time. You should have no trouble laying this out in one hour. And so where people make mistakes is if they run the joists in obviously the wrong direction and they do what I think is just a basic judgment error. But there's no calculations. You're not doing any sizing. You're just doing a layout of the framing. It shouldn't be a difficult problem for you to solve. You should be able to handle the structural vignettes. Just take your time and don't get caught up and get nervous. You want to take your time, think about the problem, spend your time, you've got one hour, spend your time 
and think it through before you actually start drawing it out. And you'll do just fine and you'll pass this. Thank you.